Okay, guys, we are back. Miss Kimberly Klein's in the house. Pops, you're there as well. We're going to be talking about today some interesting news from our partner, actually, AUL Corporation. They sell vehicle service contracts, colloquially referred to as extended warranties. We decided to partner with them after we interviewed a bunch of different administrators. That's who we sell back at joinya.com. And Kimberly, you found this article, I guess it was in one of the industry publications. It seems like more and more people are buying vehicle service contracts, the extended warranties. What did you find uh, uh, happening in the market right now? Well, it was very interesting. So the president of AUL has come out and said that um, there has been an increase of over 44% of VSC sales since last year. That's pretty big, really pretty big. And we know that dealerships are making more and more money these days, but used cars are key here because of all the tech that's in new and used cars but because of the number of used cars, people want to feel protected when they're buying a used car. And especially since they're spending so much money, typically that's a depreciating asset. Well, it's not even an asset, is it? It's just a depreciating piece of metal. But, you know, that's not the case right now. And people feel like they want to protect it with a VSC. And I found that to be extremely interesting. Well, and I would think, Kimberly, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but with the amount of money people have to actually pay for these used cars and the amount of money that they actually have to put down in order to qualify for the loans, that one of the major reasons why they would be buying a, an extended service contract or, or extended warranty is because they're afraid they're not going to have the cash available if there's an issue with the vehicle going forward. I, I, I know suddenly a lot of these people are cash poor. Yeah, exactly. And not only that, but name me something that isn't going up in price. Um, I can't think of anything. <laughs> but everything's going up in price, including parts and labor for any kind of I, repair that you might have. Uh, pork chops aren't when my butcher doesn't have them. Oh, well, there you go. Okay. <laughs> so what's your, what's your take, Kimberly? Why have we seen such an increase? Because obviously, I mean, we've been selling uh, vehicle service contracts for, I guess... It's going to be a year in a couple of months now. And, you know, we, we've had pretty good uptake. People like to buy them from us, which is really awesome. It helps us make money, pay the bills, all that fun stuff. What do you think is driving a 44% increase, though, year over year? Like, that's really significant. Is it just the fact that people are buying complex used cars? Or is it that the sales tactics yeah. in the F&I office are getting a little bit more effective? Well, that's a really good question. Um, and, and I agree with the president of AUL whenever he's, he did mention um, the fact that dealerships were forced into more online sales during this wonderful pandemic that we've gone through. They're forced into, um, you know, redoing processes, if that's a word, and selling online. So that results in more time for people to do research and to find out more. Instead of getting hit in the finance office with all these products right away, people are begin, you know, they're able to take their time and do some research before they make that purchase. Not enough people are researching it because they should buy it from us if they're gonna buy it. It's a lot cheaper. Yeah. But I, I hear what you're saying. It is interesting. Like I know um, all the big public uh, uh, um, automotive retailers, like Penske has carshop.com. I think it's Lithia has driveway.com. Uh, Asbury Automotive has uh, clicklane.com. These are all like their online like tools. And in each of them, mm -hmm. I've signed up for them to test them. And each of them, you can like start to price out extended warranties on there. You can't actually buy them there. You have to buy them at the dealership, which makes sense because you still go to the F&I office. But you are able to kind of like preempt that surprise if you use some of these tools that are out there. So you think that by doing initial research, more people are just self-selecting saying, okay, I am going to buy this. Yeah, exactly. I do think that. And here we come, here comes YAA giving you more um, information and more education on just exactly a breakdown of a vehicle service contract. What does it cover? What's the difference between exclusionary and stated? Who's making up the price? of an extended warranty. When should I get one? Do I have to get it now? Can I wait and get it later? All of these questions, it's kind of like going down a rabbit hole of vehicle service contracts and YAA is here to help people with that and to understand how they work. Uh, and I think also, if I may, um, with, the, with the massive increase in the amount of 
service contracts that are getting sold. I think that correlates into why so many dealerships have seen an increase in per vehicle gross profit in the finance department. Because as you well know, uh, most dealerships double the cost of what the service contract is as to make it their retail price. So if it costs them a thousand dollars, that sometimes they'll triple the cost and they'll go, it's twenty nine ninety nine. Mm-hmm. Well, if you're selling forty four percent more service contracts, your F and I gross per vehicle is going up substantially. And as we've seen reported by these public groups, every one of them has seen a significant increase in their back end profit from their uh, from their dealerships. Well said. Well said. So let's, before we end this, let's give a tip on vehicle service contracts. So, okay. um, because these are questions that I get asked on, on phone calls every single day. What's the difference between, you know, yours and everybody else's? And the first thing that I like to go over is the fact that we were able to partner, yes, AUL. Um, but what I want people to know is that there are dealership administrators that contract with dealerships to sell their products in the finance office. Those products have to be of a certain quality. Otherwise, everybody's got problems. Everybody, the general manager, the entire dealership, the finance manager, the service department, and of course, you, the customer, you've got issues. So they have to be of a certain quality for new and newer vehicles. So dealership administrators are are strictly dealership and then you've got everything else. And I know people ask me every day about uh, other companies. You can name them, yeah, um, Endurance, Car Checks, Car Shield. Car Shield, which I think is spending a lot of money right now, Car Shield, on doing commercials, uh, television commercials. So there is a difference between, it's kind of like this, guys. It's kind of like big banks and credit unions. Big banks have strict guidelines that they, they've got to meet. Credit unions, yes, they have guidelines too, but they can do their own thing. They can cover, you know, it, it's kind of like car shield. They can cover this and not that, or have you pay for something and then hopefully wait to be reimbursed. Uh, credit unions can make their own. Hi, Sophie. <laughs> <laughs> She's sneaking up on you. I want to bring up a point, though, Kimberly, um, which I don't know. We haven't mentioned it yet in this video. We've mentioned it in other videos. You can negotiate on extended warranties at the dealership. I know for the three of us, like, that's just common knowledge. But someone watching this video might not know that. So if you are interested in purchasing one, yes, you have your kind of, like, credit union options, as you as you phrased it, which I think is, like, appropriate. You know, like, your car checks, your endurances of the world. Then you have your dealership ones, the ones that you'll be offered at the dealership. If you're in the market for these things, no matter what, negotiate them. Just don't negotiate them with us because we, we only make 500 bucks. We can't negotiate right. off that 500 bucks. We need to make some money. But genuinely, like if you're at the dealership and we now know from this, from this new news report, 44% increase year over year in vehicle service contracts being sold. More people are buying them. And then dad, to your point, dealerships are making money hand over fist right now. We are seeing back end gross profits never before seen makes you think that like people are just making an absolute killing and if you go in there and you're not knowledgeable enough to or have had you know the coaching to say hey i'm gonna i'm gonna negotiate on this then you're not gonna know well said zach and well said ray um and and here's another little tidbit i do know because the front end is making really nice gross right now um it seems I'm hearing more and more and more that the back end, the finance office, they're also digging their feet in and maybe not negotiating as much as they did in the past. So they're taking advantage of the fact that, hey, the front end is is making all this money and they're being steadfast and holding to their prices because of inventory shortage. Well, so is the finance office. That does not mean that there's still not room to negotiate. Trust me, there's a lot of negotiation room left in the finance office. So learn from YAA and go do it. And that's to your point, Dad. I mean, you said it was like 100%, 200% markup at times in these types of products. Not necessarily all of them, but on extended warranties, yeah. So negotiate, negotiate, negotiate. 
And I can't wait to see the data next year. Something tells me it's only gonna to continue to go up. People are inherently risk adverse. That's why these products exist. I honestly think a lot of people don't even understand what they're buying most of the time. They're just like, oh, it's an extended warranty. Back on our website, we've done a full like debrief of what's an extended warranty versus a vehicle service contract. Who can call it what? Like, there's a lot of a lot of games, a lot of uh, uh, cloak and dagger things that go on with VSCs and extended warranties. So my hope is that more and more people get educated about them, and maybe we can even do some like deeper dive content on this. And what I mean by that is, I think Kimberly, to your point about like endurance or car checks or car shield. We should buy one of their products and we should document trying to use it. I think that would be an incredible, an incredible piece of content. Like let's, anyway, I'll plant that seed for another time, but it's going through my head. Well, I mean, that's a really great idea. And I do often send people back to the blog, Zach, where you, you, I think you wrote all of that, uh, all the different comparisons of, um, the different reviews that we have of car checks, car shield. This one versus that one. Yeah, so I link people back to that almost every day. It's a good resource. Links down below. All right, guys, thanks for your time as always. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>